This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Look at this. It's beautiful. Do you ever look at a tree and start to feel just violently inadequate? Like, I have enough things trying to make me feel bad about myself these days without trees trying to get a finger in the pie. So this week, I'm going to step on some toes. Leaves. Branches? And I am going to begin wearing clothing that looks like trees. It's trees then. This week I am primarily inspired by these corsets that look like tree trunks. Also a few of these that just have like fungi and foliage and mushrooms growing off of them. It's just very folksy and fey and whimsical, which is really the energy that I'm trying to bring into 2023. As far away from reality as possible. <laughs> The general concept that I have in mind for this project is to make a base corset, kind of in the shape of a Victorian corset that looks like wood grain, and decorate that with moss and a bunch of fake mushrooms. Not super original at all, just fun and whimsical, and a piece I can pair with other costumes I've made. So let's get to work on a pattern for this thing. But before that, let's hear a word from this video's sponsor, Skillshare. You may know Skillshare for classes in photography, film and video editing, and illustration, but Skillshare also has hundreds of career-focused classes, and the new year is the perfect time to be focusing on new career goals. These days, traditional jobs, and I should know, are not for everybody, but Skillshare has the tools that can help you to design a career that fits you. This year on the channel, I want to take on more ambitious projects, I want to look into newer areas of interest like editing and cinematography, but most of all, I need to become more organized and productive so that I can actually accomplish these goals. So recently, I have been checking out Ali Abdal's class, Productivity for Creators, Systems, Organization, and Workflow. Now, I am not an organized person at all. All. But this year I am determined to actually get things together because there is just so much that I want to do. In this class, Ali very tangibly separates your management of time, attention, and ideas and offers strategies to help them to work together. For example, time blocking things in, actually planning, and trying to stay within my time window for each task. <laughs> See how on Monday the 16th it says film ad? I'm filming the ad. Which, structure like that, very effective for my easily distracted crow brain. Also, a little unrelated, but on top of that, I did say that I've been trying to grow my skills in cinematography and stuff like that. So I also recently took Zach Mulligan's class, Cinematography Basics and Introduction to Lighting Techniques, which has been helping me to get better mood in my videos and experimenting with different lighting techniques. That way I can provide aesthetic footage for you all. So no matter what your 2023 goals are, whether to grow your mindset towards a new career path or really hone the skills you need to get there, Skillshare can help you out for free because the first 1,000 people to join using the link in my description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this project. Now let's get back to my quest to upstage trees. Now it's time to MacGyver this video up and wrap my entire torso in duct tape. Also, I get a lot of concerned comments, but like, this is not a real knife. I'm not gonna stab myself. You guys give me too much credit. I am not that chaotic. Hmm. Can I do that and then just talk really, really loudly? Engaging content here. So how's your day going? That's pretty good. One of these days, I'm gonna figure out how to pad my hips because I am shaped like a number two pencil. Not very Victorian of me. I do think Kira is gonna have a really fun time coming through this footage, trying to figure out which bad jokes to keep in. Yes. Apparently Dollar General duct tape is manufactured in one continuous loop. Um, just kidding, I found it. But I do have video evidence of just how long that took me. Okay, this is where the uh, strategy side of all of this comes in because I need to figure out how to wrap myself so that it is actually corset shaped. No lumps. I guess that's okay. I have an associate's degree in engineering technology. So anyone who's watching at home wanting this to be a tutorial, I would say you're in good hands. And upon completion, we have what is essentially a duct tape corset. I have basically put this duct tape on to resemble a Victorian corset. I tried to put it on in such a way that it would be tight around my waist, but then give me enough space around my hips that any compression that happens here goes down 
or up, so it's actually quite comfortable. The other thing I did was whenever I first put it on, I noticed that it was putting a little bit of stress on my hips, so I actually went in and did some relief cuts on my hips, and it's not putting any like strain in that area. And then I also tried to do the bust in such a way that it was giving my bust like support because I would also like to use this as like a dress pattern in the future. So it has good support good coverage. If I add some cups, it should be good to wear as a garment. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to find a friend to help me get cut out of this. Actually, don't mind me. I just forgot the point of all of this. I have to draw the pattern on first. Let's do that. Now, I need someone to help get this off me. That's just drawn to waste. I am free. Baby really holds its shape. Look at that. Just me and my twin. First we have to cut her up. So I know all this is a huge mess, but I've just spent the last probably hour or so transferring my duct tape pattern onto pieces of paper and actually for once, kind of organizing things. Look at this, I have several different corset styles. And then I also have variations and they're all labeled and color coded. I have a little color marking system here so I know which is which. And they all go in a folder and they're separated by little labels. Oh organization? Me? Now I know you're all thinking, who are you and what have you done with Hira? And valid question. I'm getting more organized this year because last year it took me entirely too long to make things because the first day that I had to do stuff, I, I always spent patterning entirely from scratch instead of just using a pre-existing pattern, which is what, you know, normal people do. So I'm finally done with <laughs> turning all of these into usable patterns and I haven't even started on what my main goal was for tonight, which is actually getting everything cut out and sewing a lot of things together. <laughs> so basically I'm I'm just gonna start cutting things out and I'm going to see how far I can get tonight. I hope to get everything cut out and then sew maybe a few things up. We'll see. That way tomorrow I can just focus on all of the like fun fancy parts, which are the things that I am really looking forward to. <laughs> So to begin, I transferred my pieces onto my canvas base, and I tried to cut these pieces on the bias to make sure they lay as nicely as possible because this pattern does have lots of odd curves. I have all of my pattern pieces cut out of the canvas, and I'm exhausted. It's like 1 a.m. I think this is all I'm gonna get to tonight. So I will see you tomorrow to continue assembly and hopefully get to some of the details. Also, slotting this in here because I have no idea where else to put this, but somewhere along the way, I also sculpted an army of tiny mushrooms to go on this bodice. And trust me, sculpting mushrooms with foam clay is the most satisfying thing ever. Highly recommend. So I began day two by pinning all of my canvas pieces together, which looked like this. Nicole cameo. <laughs> then I stitched all of them up. began ironing down all my seams. Um, so yikes. I didn't get it on camera and probably good thing, but I was just ironing this. The iron fell down on the ground, broke the cord in half and uh, barked and left that little nice mark on the floor. Holy crap. Why is this what happens whenever you just have a uh, slightly wobbly ironing board, huh? I almost got electrocuted. Okay, friends, for lack of an iron, I've been forced to get a little creative, but it's somehow working. I am using a heat gun, and then that is the top of my glue pot. Um, and force it open with this. We're making some progress. 
this is what she looks like all ironed and ready to have foam put on her. I'm honestly so excited. Like, it looks, dare I say, good? Anyways, let's go do that. <laughs> So I cut out all of my foam pieces and readied myself to spend a little quality time with my favorite inhalant, barge cement, and glue some foam for about an hour. This process is about as interesting as it looks, and as irritable as it smells. For reference, barge cement smells a little bit like someone pouring flaming vinegar into your nose hole and topping it off with cayenne pepper. One eternity later. But soon enough I was done with that, and it was time to add some texture. I also got an actual wood burning tool to help me with this process. But uh, the next day, cause I fell asleep. <laughs> So, real talk, whenever I'm texturing this, I'm really mixing together a bunch of different woody looks. I'm kind of trying to make it look like bark, wood grain, and tree knots all at once. I'm pretty much going for the look of stained live edge lumber for this. So here I'm kind of going panel by panel, picking where I want to have a prominent knot or imperfection, carving that in, and then all the other textures and details go around that. I'm also periodically switching between my soldering iron and wood burning tool to get more variation in my texture, and I'm also burning the top and bottom edges of the corset to get a more jagged, tree-like look. Kind of like this. Now it is time to paint. What do you mean? There you go. Trees. I'm coming for you, brand. <laughs> I'm coming for their brand. Welcome back to subpar lighting conditions and a kit lens that is probably kind of broken. Um, that's why this part of the video is blurry as all heck. And yep. Y yikes, that's pretty bad. Um, anyways, I'm about to detail these, but I do need to like maybe install grommets first And I was just thinking that this one layer of canvas and one layer of foam is probably not gonna be strong enough to withstand the girth of my laces So think about adding one more layer of canvas to the inside of this just to reinforce it a little bit more So let's do that. Our kit lens may be broken, but our spirit sure ain't. Woo! Let's cut some canvas. there i would like to state for the record that we are straight up doing cat yoga at this point because she won't get up so this is how i'm moving around and she just she stays she just stays <laughs> she's just will not move hold on i was doing this thing earlier i want to see if i can get her to do it cat yoga cat yoga kind of good for doing like leg lifts if you ever need to work out and your cat just simply will not leave you alone i highly recommend this there it is <laughs> and then you switch the other leg oh what are you doing my muscles aren't gonna be even now now we paint. To detail these babies, I just took some watered down black paint and worked it into every crevice and groove of the wood pattern to really give it some depth. As you may guess, it literally takes forever. And this is what it looks like in real time. Love that for me. And uh, uh, uh oh, now you might be thinking that's not what the corset you were working on looks like and you would be right. That's because I've been tricking you this entire time. Uh, well, I guess not really, but I actually began this video a week ago making this corset and decided to pivot away to make this because I didn't have enough time to make that. And when I returned to this project, I both liked this one a lot and wanted to keep it the way it was and also felt it was inadequate and not cool enough to cover in moss and mushrooms. Hence the reason for calling it audible with a new duct tape pattern. Long story short, I have been 
been very adaptable here lately. So this means I'll have two lovely pieces by the end of this video, but it also means I have two pieces to detail over the course of many hours. Anyways, once I finally finished the grooves on the corsets and straps, I moved on to adding a little more color variation and highlights to the surface of everything, particularly with a warm red brown and a metallic gold. And I did so by rubbing it on with a very old, crusty paper towel. You'd be amazed by how effective this is. And once that was done, I also decided I wanted a little bit more structure down the front opening, so I glued some zip ties in there for a little bit more rigidity. And then it was time to add a clear coat to my pieces to seal them up and make them look even more like stained wood. And oh boy, does that look satisfying. Also, if you look closely in the distance, you can see the executive producer inspecting my work. Anyways, after that it was time to paint some tiny mushrooms, and I did so in several tempting varieties, some real and some completely fabricated. Either way, they came out looking small and adorable, in great contrast to the fungi featured in my entertainment for that evening. Then it was GROMIT TIME! Observant viewers will notice that I leveled up my supplies a bit in this video by purchasing a quilting roll, a wood burning tool, an actual pair of fabric wow. scissors, and an awl. Wow, so sophisticated. To use an awl, one only needs to simply mark the location of the grommets, punchy punchy to create a hole, and then repeat this like 23 times and install the grommets for both corsets and all the straps over the course of like an hour. Because <laughs> this part takes me forever for fear of hammering my fingers. Something that I've done many times. And once it's laced up, the simple corset is done. But corset number two, as Ron Swamp and chic as it looks, still needs a few more details. All right. We are very nearly almost done. Next, I just need to decorate it with like moths and all of the mushrooms that I have. Um, I was getting a little distracted watching the last of a show, which is very good by the way. Pride, first episode, so that's cool. I feel like this show is going to be a lot for me. Also, um, lap check, she's here. She's always here these days. I, the second I sat down, the second she was up here. It's honestly nice though. It's keeping my lap rather warm. Um, the slight sensation of pain every now and then whenever she digs her claws into my leg to like, you know, make biscuits. I love owning a cat. a ton of rhyme or reason to this. I'm mostly just gluing patches of moss in places where I think it looks good and adding mushrooms on top of that. Mostly focusing the shelf fungi on the hips fading out to accentuate the shape and sprinkling the smaller mushrooms in around that. And speaking of fungus fanning out, there's maybe a plasmodial slime mold joke in there somewhere. The fungus sure did fan out in the Last of Us TV show. <laughs> oh, oh, what, what's this? Is it another television show review that you didn't ask for? Yes. Spoilers for The Last of Us TV show and game. Now, I never played The Last of Us games, but I love a good video essay, so I've had the entire plot basically spoiled for me. And as someone who has a massive crush on Pedro Pascal, I was super excited for this show. I can't speak to the faithfulness of the first episode, although people who know the game seem to think it does a great job. But from a story and filmmaking standpoint, it got me invested right away. Something I thought it handled really well was rising tension. I think a lot of properties have a big problem with undercutting tension these days, but this this was still paced in such a way where we could still get heartwarming scenes like Sarah giving her dad the fixed watch, alongside terrifying scenes where the old lady neighbor looks like this. Uh, when dogs start acting like that, I, I'm out. I'm gone. Bye. And as far as tension is concerned, don't even get me started on Sarah's death scene because it absolutely broke me. That's the one I cried at, in case you were wondering. It was just extremely tense and hit in a place that really felt real, which is just heart-wrenching to say, but Pedro and Nico absolutely acted their hearts out in the scene and like it gutted me which i think just speaks to how well crafted and paced this pilot is i already like and care about all the characters i'm gonna take them i'm gonna put them in my pocket for safekeeping <laughs> also anna torv is here which i didn't even realize it was her at first and then i had to do a double take and i went Olivia? Absolutely love her. We don't get to see a whole lot of Ellie, but I think Bella Ramsey does a good job. I really like the rage that this child is giving off so far. She's already attempted to stab no less than two people, and I like how when she figures out the music code, Joel is like, all right, 
I see you. I also like that the answer to the code was one of my favorite songs by Depeche Mode. So that was pretty cool. Anyways, I freaking love this show. Now where was I? That's right. After attaching a few more mushrooms and moss on the straps and realizing I would be regretting my life decisions the next morning, I finally finished it up. And now both pieces are finally done. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and as usual, a huge thank you for this project goes to my patrons, especially my executive producers. Thea Maya, Agent Sketchy, Wolven Underscore Arts, Corvid Dome, Lovisa, Eloquent Silence, In the Galaxy, Cleos, Meeks Hunter, Megan Penland, Sushi McNushi, Satoni, Mel W, Jim Jiminy Jim Jiminy, India Gloom, Hypnos, Reflings, Katie, Michael Twycross, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, Panda Pie 365, Bobo McFoe, Will Schmidt, and Bean the Bread. If you would like to become a patron, I do post a lot of behind the scenes stuff for the channel on my Patreon, along with work in progress shots of projects like this. So if you would like to become a patron and support this kind of nonsense, the link will be in the description. Do you respect wood?